Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a video about tissue fluid. As blood flows through capillaries within tissues, some of the plasma leaks out through the gaps between the cells in the walls of the capillary. They flow into the spaces between the cells of the tissue, forming tissue fluid. Just like blood, tissue fluid contains solutes such as glucose and amino acids, gas molecules such as oxygen and carbon dioxide, hormones and neurotransmitters. However, it contains fewer protein molecules compared to the blood plasma. This is because many proteins are too large to escape easily through the capillary endothelium. They also do not contain red blood cells. However, you will find white blood cells in the tissue fluid. This is because white blood cells can squeeze through the wall and move freely in the tissue fluid. The volume of fluid that leaves capillaries to form tissue fluid is the result of two opposing forces, the hydrostatic pressure and the osmotic pressure. Let's look at the arterial end of a capillary first. The blood pressure inside the capillary is high in this region. This high hydrostatic pressure causes fluid to be pushed out into the tissue. It can also be called a leakage. Since some substances can pass through the capillary wall, some of them cannot, the filtration of blood occurs. Small molecules and ions such as glucose, amino acids and salt are filtered out, while large plasma proteins are not. In general, only molecules with a relative molecular mass smaller than 68,000 can move through. There are pores between the endothelial cells to allow this movement to occur more easily. But there is an opposite force as well. Due to the greater concentration of dissolved proteins in the blood plasma than in the tissue fluid, there is a water potential gradient from the tissue fluid into the blood plasma. When you compare these two forces, the first one is greater than the second one. Overall, there is a net movement of water from the capillaries into the tissue fluid. Now let's look at the other part, which is the venue end of a capillary bed. At the venue end, the blood pressure inside the capillaries is lower. There is less tendency for water to be pushed out of the capillaries into the tissue. But the second force, the water potential gradient still exists. It is caused by the difference in the concentration of dissolved proteins, which is similar to that at the arterial end. The net movement of water is from the tissue fluid back into the capillaries over here. Overall, more fluid flows out capillaries than into them. So, there is a net loss of fluid when blood is passing through a capillary bed. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.